Hi everybody and welcome back to a new video in the audio data augmentation series. Last time we saw a little bit of an introduction about audio data augmentation, why it's important, what it is. This time we're going to get into the theoretical aspects of different audio augmentation techniques. Let's get started. The first distinction we should make is that we can work in two different audio representations when we do audio uh, augmentation. The, the first one is in waveform, so directly augmenting raw audio. The second one is augmenting spectrograms. That is a very useful time frequency representation of audio. Now, if you're not familiar with spectrograms, I highly suggest you to go check out this video that introduces like that uh, in a very like simple manner. Okay, so we have two types of audio augmentation techniques. Some of them are good to be used with raw audio, others with spectrograms. So let's start with the augmentation techniques with raw audio or with waveforms. So the first one is time shifting. So what is this? Well, this is like quite simple. So you have a waveform, so you take like certain part of the waveform and you shift them like a right and left in the waveform. So you're basically like moving around like your sounds. Now this can be done uh, with like environmental sounds, like I don't know, like gunshots, like sirens and things like that. In other situations like speech or music where like order is very important, time shifting is not necessarily like the most important techniques that you can use. Second technique, this is extremely important, time stretching. So what is it? Well, you uh, take uh, your uh, waveform and you change the speed of the sound without changing its pitch. So you're basically like speeding up or slowing down your sound without affecting the frequency or the speech. This is particularly useful and effective when working with all sorts of like music detection or like sound detection uh, techniques or use cases, I should say. Next, we have pitch scaling, which is a sort of like complementary uh, augmentation techniques to time stretching, because what it does is changing the frequency or changing the pitch without changing the speed of the sound. So you can move up or down, uh, for example, like a melody, like a couple of tones or semitones up or down without actually affecting like the, the speed. Uh, now, one thing like that I have to mention here is that all of this uh, sort of like changes will introduce some like level of artifacts. So you have to be like very careful when you use uh, like time stretching and pitch scaling. You don't have to overuse them because otherwise you're gonna have like sounds that are not no longer credible, and we don't want to have that in our augmented data. Okay, another. Uh, augmentation techniques in the waveform domain is noise addition. So what do we do here? Well, this is just like super straightforward. We add some sort of like noise. So we can add white noise, pink noise, or we can add some sort of like background noise. So this is done uh, to create like, a, or to have a model that's more robust to different types of noises. It could be like environmental uh, like noise, like background noise, or it could be some sort of like white and like noisy. Uh, things like that. So you just like mix the the noise, uh, well, you add noise to uh, your like signal. Cool. What next? So we have impulse response addition. So what's this? Well, here we basically add different types of reverbs to uh, our uh, data. So we are adding like reverb. So why is this like interesting? Well, because if you're doing certain things like for example music instrument recognition, which may be in different rooms with different impulse responses, it's good to have uh, different types of like reverbs so that your uh, model will see different types of reverbs and and understand and try like, to become like robust to different reverbs when doing classification, for example, for music instrument classification. Of course, you can use this with any type of use case, but there are certain use cases like music instrument classification that are like particularly, um, I don't know, like where like impulse uh, response addition is particularly useful, I would say, yeah. Next up, we have filters. So what you can also do is apply some sort of like filters in the frequency domain to uh, your signal. For example, you can uh, low uh, pass, use low pass filters, high pass filters, or uh, pass band 
uh, filters, right? And this will sort of like simulate when you have like different uh, like situations where like, for example, the, uh, the bass frequencies are just like cut off. Say for example, you are like on, on your mobile phone, say like the bases are, the bass frequencies are not really there, right? So you can use uh, all of these techniques for that purpose. Now, uh, there's also like another technique that's called like polarity inversion. So what we do here is basically we take the signal and we just like flip it uh, down. So we swap like the, the, the positive sort of like signal for like the negative like and vice versa. So how do we do that? Well, this is extremely simple mathematically. So what we need to do is basically taking the signal, the waveform and multiplying it by minus one so that we'll just like flip it uh, like horizontally, right? Finally, we have random gain. So this is also like quite simple to, to, to implement because all you need to do is just like take uh, like your waveform and then multiply it for a random uh, factor. So this is gonna sort of like change like the amplitude and therefore like the, the, the perceived loudness like of the of the curve of the of your of your of a waveform. And this is also good because uh, you, you can use it just like to, to uh, make uh, loudness uh, agnostic your uh, models or like amplitude agnostic your models because you are covering like the, the loudness or like the amplitude space quite a lot. Now, of course, these are only a few of the techniques that you can use. There are way more that you could actually use. For example, you could use like normalization or like um, compress like your audio or distortion, for example. We are gonna see some of this when we review um, a particular like libraries that do like audio uh, data augmentation. But I would say like these are definitely like the most important ones. And if I had to pick like the, the top two that I think like are the most uh, important like in most uh, use cases, I would definitely pick like pitch scaling and time stretching. They've proved time and again, they are very effective at making our models more robust and improving accuracy. Now, um, let's move on to spectrogram augmentation transformations or different techniques which we can apply directly to spectrogram rep representations of audio. Now here I necessarily have to introduce this paper called Spec Augment, a simple data augmentation method for automatic speech recognition, because this was a very seminal uh, paper with regard to using uh, spectrogram augmentations uh, for speech uh, recognition. And the Google Brain researchers found out that by using a couple of specific techniques that we'll review, uh, you could actually increase the accuracy of your speech recognition algorithm. So I'll definitely, definitely suggest you to go check out this paper because it's very, very impressive and very well, well written. So what are like the different techniques that we can use in the spectrogram space? So the, the, the first two that I'll talk about come directly from uh, spec augment. So the first one is called time masking. So here you have like your original um, spectrogram and then here you have the spectrogram with time masking. So what's happening here is basically we are masking uh, certain parts, certain portions of the uh, spectrogram. So as you can see here, we have like this uh, vertical bars and here you can just like put all zeros in the respect, uh, respective like frequencies at this particular uh, time. Or you can use, for example, like the, the min value like of the energy that you have across like the spectrogram. But basically what you're doing here is you are just like cutting little pieces of the spectrogram in the time domain. So in, in the time like axis. So basically the, the spectrogram has like some uh, like blind spots. And this is like very good because then you're basically training your models, adding them a level of robustness that's given through the, the lack of certain portions of the spectrogram, right? Now, there's the sort of like inverse uh, application or inverse operation that we can apply to spectrograms that's called frequency masking. So what's happening here is that we are sort of like masking certain frequencies. And how do we achieve that? So basically we use this 
horizontal bars. And once again, we can put like all zeros or we can use just like the, the mean value of the energy across uh, like uh, the whole spectrogram. And in this case, like here at 2048, we like must the whole frequency throughout like the whole um, the whole spectrogram. In this case, we just like, uh, yeah, down here, we, we must only like a portion like of the frequency at 512, so up to, I'd say like 190 seconds or like frames, 190 frames that we have down here. So yeah, in, in this case, what we're doing is we are just like uh, removing certain frequencies from the spectrogram so that again, the, the model will learn to work even if there are certain like imperfections in the spectrogram, namely uh, lack of certain frequencies. So this will make your models, which of course are trained on spectrograms, more robust. Okay, so what, are, what other like, techniques can we use in the spectrogram uh, domain? So we can use time stretching, just like uh, in the waveform uh, domain, and we can also use uh, pitch scaling. So, and of course you can use a bunch of like other techniques that come directly from like the, 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 the row audio domain as well. Of course, the implementation is gonna be slightly different, but still like the idea is the same with time stretching, you just like change uh, the speed uh, of the sound without like change affecting the the pitch and with pitch scaling you do like the the opposite so you change the pitch but you don't affect uh, the speed of the of the sound okay and of course you have way more but in the case of spectrogram augmentation in fact like the the best two things to apply are time masking and frequency masking definitely if you are doing any sort of like speech recognition or speech processing because that uh, these two augmentation techniques have proved to be very um, important for improving the, the quality of those algorithms or models that you are building. Okay, so uh, that was it for this uh, theoretical review of the different techniques that you have available for audio data augmentation. Once again, I suggest you to go check out the Sound of AI Slack community. If you're not a member, try to sign up because you're missing a lot because there we are a lot of people super interested in all of this AI music, AI audio um, fields. So I highly suggest you to go check out, check it out and sign up. I, I left you like the, the sign up link in the description box below. What's next? Uh, so we are gonna move to uh, implementation time. So we're gonna take a few audio augmentation transforms or techniques and we're gonna implement them in Python from scratch, some of them and others using uh, Librosa, our preferite, uh, our favorite, I would say, uh, audio processing library in Python. So that's all for today, really. I'm gonna see you next time. Take care for now.